You think you're everyone's protector, everyone's hero, but who do you save, really? You even realize how useless you are? Do you realize what you do to the people you're supposed to protect? You've been living in a dream, Noel. You're happy here, and you would be forever. But I've come to take you away from it. I'm sorry. Hey, Lightning, we'll be able to be together again, right? When all this is over? Final Fantasy 13 2 is what people think Final Fantasy 13 is. This game was released on December 15th, 2011 for the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 and was ported to PC in 2014. It was the follow up to the controversial Final Fantasy 13 and was still a part of Square Enix's Fabula Nova Crystallis which was supposed to be a shared mythos that could be changed and recontextualized between the Final Fantasy 13 series, the Final Fantasy Type-0 series that ended up being one game, and Final Fantasy 13 Versus, which eventually became Final Fantasy 15 after getting rid of nearly all of the connections to the other game. However, this could be rectified if Vernum Rex becomes its own series, taking the place of Versus 13, because this whole story was to contextualize the period in which Final Fantasy 13 2 was developed. It was supposed to be one part of a grand narrative instead of just being the midpoint of the Final Fantasy 13 series. So with that being said, in complete sincerity as a Kingdom Hearts and Draconeer fan, let me explain why Final Fantasy 13 2 is the most confusing game I've ever played. But before we get started, if you enjoy my videos, please like, subscribe, and share my content. Also, if you wish to support my work directly, becoming a YouTube member or a Patreon subscriber are the best ways to do so. so with that being said, thank you for being here and let's get started with the combat. This game uses an improved version of the command synergy battle system from its predecessor, bringing back elements like the ATB meter, which allows one character to do up to six actions in one turn when the meter is completely filled. The main goal of these actions is to build up the stagger bar in the top right corner, which will allow your characters to do more damage and stagger enemies as they attack, allowing you to deal with enemies quickly through a burst period. And you accomplish this by analyzing the enemy and hitting them with their weaknesses. And the only way to access these abilities you need is by using Final Fantasy XIII's Paradigm System. This system allows our two permanent playable characters to shift between six classes that focus on physical attacks, magic attacks, healing, buffs, debuffs, and defense. But this is where Final Fantasy XIII II separates itself from its predecessor. Number one, your two characters get an improved leveling system that allows them to obtain all six classes early into the game on top of other bonuses based on your own choices through their leveling trees. However, you might be confused as to why I'm saying two characters when there are three on screen. And that's because the second change in Final Fantasy 13 2's combat is the Paradigm Pack that allows players to collect monsters they fight along their journeys and these monsters take the place of the third party member. But you're only allowed to have three equipped during the battle and each of them only have access to one of the six classes, meaning that you have to be careful about how to build your party. Do you build upon what your main characters are good at or try to make up for what they lack? Create an ultra aggressive team or rather become very defensive to win a battle of attrition? This game makes you ask these questions the entire game, keeping combat fresh and forces you to reassess your options at every challenge. Even so, there's still more with change number three, which is the improved transitions between classes. In Final Fantasy 13, there was a small pause whenever your characters changed, but in Final Fantasy 13 2, they get rid of this, allowing the combat to run more smoothly. Unfortunately, for all of the praise I've given this combat system, the game has some horrible difficulty spikes, with it varying anywhere from super easy to just right, and lastly, way too hard. Focusing on that last statement specifically, Specifically, when you get to the final area of the game, it makes you feel extremely underleveled. And it was so bad that I eventually just turned the difficulty down to easy so I could finish the game and make this video. However, it wasn't the end of my suffering. The problem continued on easy mode with the final boss, Jet 
Bahamut where I had to repeatedly kill extremely powerful adds, Amber and Garnet Bahamut respectively before damaging Jack. And these dragons continue to come back whether you beat him in 10 minutes or an hour like it took me. I'm not a newbie to JRPGs, I've played at least one game in every major franchise you could name. So with that being said, Jet Bahamut is in my top 5 worst bosses I've ever fought. And this is something that kept happening throughout my playthrough of Final Fantasy 13, where every great decision was countered by an equally weird one. So let's move on to the environment, exploration, and visuals. Final Fantasy 13 2 picks up where the first game left off with excellent visuals that still hold up today. It has diverse environments and character models that match or surpass some games of today. With the bountiful greenery of the sunlit waterscape, the haunting beauty of the dying world, and the transcendent Valhalla, in addition to other areas being unique in their own right. However, this is one of the aspects in my opinion where Final Fantasy 13 2 is clearly better than Final Fantasy 13. Because while Final Fantasy 13 2 has 10 less explorable areas, time travel allows us to explore these areas during different time periods or alternate timelines and has a lot of NPCs in those areas. However, admittedly, most of these areas are simple color swaps with different tints on the screen or a weather change, but these changes in addition to the changing dialogue makes these places feel brand new. And the best example of this is Academia where it's dark, damp and depressing because a rogue AI took over and is ruling over society without humans knowing. But once our heroes go back to the past to correct the paradox, Academia becomes a bright, sunny and hopeful city to the human race where it's basically a utopia. Nonetheless, there is still one great thing about the explorable areas in this game, which is that you can backtrack to any area whenever to find optional areas or side quests you want to do with very small exceptions. This is a huge improvement over Final Fantasy 13 that didn't let you backtrack much at all and allows players to tackle the main story at their own pace instead of blazing through it seeming like a response to the previous game and it also lines up with the narrative having a heavy focus on time travel allowing any cutscene outside of the main story regardless of where you are in your journey to fit in perfectly. But moving on let me get into the story. So a basic summary of Final Fantasy 13 2's story is that history was changed at the end of Final Fantasy 13, leading everyone to believe that lightning became the crystal pillar that stopped Cocoon from falling and is dead, except for lightning's younger sister, Sarah, who remembers lightning being there when she woke up from being a crystal. So three years after the events of Final Fantasy 13, a boy named Noel, who is the last living human from a dystopian future, arrived to tell Sarah that lightning is alive and that they need to travel through time to stop Cocoon from falling, to stop his future from happening. And Sarah believes him because she's been having dreams of Noel and her sister in a place called Valhalla. So this leads Sarah and Noel on a journey through time to save Cocoon, the future, and find lightning. During this adventure, our characters quickly find out that Cocoon didn't fall by accident and that it was the plan of the main villain, Kyle. Caius, the immortal guardian of the Cirrus Yule. Caius wants to destroy Cocoon in order to break time itself because he is tired of seeing Yule die over and over after all of these years, meaning that he'll freeze every place in time forever, making everyone immortal. However, through the combined efforts of Sarah, Noel, and Lightning, they defeat Caius, but he manages to complete his goal without destroying Cocoon, with the game's ending being a massive cliffhanger. The core of Final Fantasy 13 2's story is excellent, with the relationships between characters and how they interact with each other being great. Like Noel's backstory near the end of the game in the Dream Realm, emphasizing how he saw the world with the dramatic red sky and dark lands that seemed to be endless, only for Sarah to save him from that dream or nightmare depending on how you see it, and changes the landscape's color, symbolizing how his mindset has changed through his journey. 
happening. Then there's the scene where Sarah and Noel realize that by fixing paradoxes they could be directly responsible for people's deaths, creating an interesting moral dilemma for our heroes for the rest of the game. Even so, in a game with time travel there has to be alternate endings and Final Fantasy 13 2 has paradox endings. But most of them aren't really endings, only three of them are and the rest of them are expansions of the story, ranging from silly or dark detours that could have been written into the main story but didn't make the final cut, fleshing out some of those characters feelings about the events in the story. Or lastly recontextualizing the relationships in Final Fantasy 13, leading me to the best paradox ending, Vanille's Truth, where Sarah and Noel travel to Oerba after the War of Transgression, where they meet a crystallized Vanille after Fang completes their focus, centuries before the events of the original Final Fantasy 13. And while this hasn't been confirmed as canon, I believe that this is why Vanille is apologetic and distraught about turning Sarah into a Lassie in the previous game, giving some depth to their established relationship and another way to view Final Fantasy 13. Unfortunately for all of the praise I'm giving these scenes, this game has two big issues that keep popping up during the story. The first one is that characters keep repeating information and they'll do it in the same cutscene the information was introduced. For example, when Lightning explained Kaius's plan to Sarah and Noel, they repeat what Lightning just told them as if Lightning doesn't understand what she said. It happens with so many characters that it became a criticism of the game's writing instead of individual characters. Regrettably, this isn't my only issue with the writing because this game has a bad habit of introducing concepts without fully explaining them or fleshing them out before the game ends, making it very obvious that Lightning Returns and other games in the Fabula Nova Crystallis were always planned to finish off some of these threads, so in retrospect makes the game feel incomplete to me. And that isn't a criticism of media that is developed in this manner. Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back is one of my favorite movies and was created in the same vein, but the key difference between that movie and this game is that Star Wars Episode 5 only had to set up one movie, whereas 13 2 had to be in line with three future projects, with one being a direct sequel, another never getting made, and the last one turning into a completely different project, leaving Final Fantasy 13 2 as a small part of a giant narrative. Also depending on how Lightning Returns finishes these points my opinion may change. And even though I have my issues with this story, I found myself enjoying the characters within it. One of the big things I remember hearing about this game's release is that the characters are bad or boring, which I don't agree with. Unfortunately, the characters don't get enough moments to capitalize on their good points or make themselves relatable to players. With Sarah having an internal conflict due to her memories being distorted and having codependency issues come to the surface like making decisions, identifying her feelings, and even communicating at some points. This is shown through her clinging to snow as he fades away and biting her tongue after meeting lightning. Then there's Noel who was filled with spite, self-hatred, and sadness because he came from a future where he was the last living human, which was highlighted through Noel verbally attacking Snow because of their similarities. Having Yule die in his arms, these two characters have very obvious flaws, but our heroes aren't the only people worth discussing, so let's talk about Caius, the main antagonist of this game, who was interesting in his own right because his plan to break time isn't for a evil reason but a personal one, with him protecting and watching over the various incarnations of Yule. Seeing these girls with the same face but different desires resign themselves to the fate of the series, which is to see the future at the cost of their own lives, leading to all of these girls dying very young. But after seeing a Yule that loves to sing, one that loved birds, and many others, Caius gets fed up with it when he gets to the extinction of mankind. He justifies his actions by believing 
believing that if humanity is going to go extinct, he might as well break time to save all of the Yules throughout time, giving us a very understandable villain. All three of these characters have issues, whether it's out of their control, self-inflicted, or a combination of both, allowing you to see how they confront problems and grow through their journeys, leading to some great emotional moments in a game that is severely lacking in them. At this point, you can tell I like Final Fantasy 13 too, but there were creative decisions that honestly confused me. Even when I take into context when this game was made and the project it was created for, it still feels lacking. But if you enjoyed Final Fantasy 13, I believe this follow-up will satisfy most of you. So with that being said, that is why Final Fantasy 13 2 is the most confusing game I've ever played, but I love it anyway. If you want to see another Final Fantasy video essay, that's on screen right now.